Welcome to Research Methods. I am Dr. Jason White. In the previous presentation, I discussed the research question. In this presentation, I will go over the annotated bibliography and the literature review. I would like to start with the literature review first, especially since the annotated bibliography is a component of the literature review. So what is the literature review? A literature review, according to Creswell, is a written summary of articles, books, and other documents that describe the past and current state of knowledge about a topic. It is a rigorous form of research engaged in all five components or stages of the research process and has its own step in research methodologies. Its purpose is to organize literature into topics, subtopics, and to identify a gap in information or support your research question. It prevents us from doing research that has already been done. If you come up with an idea, it is likely that somebody else came up with an idea too, or the same idea. So our job really is to look for a gap in information, and that's where our research project will be. In essence, the literature review summarizes all research on the topic. There are three types of sources in a literature review. Primary sources, secondary sources, and tertiary sources. Primary sources are the database where secondary sources draw from. They include books, chapter books, manuscripts, both published and unpublished, written by those that are well known in the field. And also their notes, interviews, business records, catalogs, data collection instruments, etc. Secondary sources are those that draw from primary sources. It does not represent original research. The focus is generally on some segment of the field, such as the history of a researcher. It's very important to understand the history of a researcher. Once you understand the framework from which they were operating from, then you can identify their biases. Tertiary sources are those that were developed from primary and secondary sources. A good example would be a textbook. For your annotated bibliography and or literature review, you will be using mostly primary sources. How does the literature review relate to qualitative and quantitative analysis? According to Creswell, there are three primary differences. However, no matter what your study is, you will engage the literature in all facets of your study. Please pause the video and take a moment to review this slide. As a researcher myself, I tend to take everything and list it out into steps as part of my process. I have done that for you in this presentation. This slide briefly discusses those steps and then subsequently we discuss those steps in greater detail. Step one, identify key terms or descriptors to use in your research. Step two, locate literature about a topic by consulting several types of materials and databases. Step three, critically evaluate and select the literature for your review. Step four, Organize the literature you have selected by abstracting or taking notes on the literature and developing a visual diagram of it. Step five, write a literature review that reports summaries of the literature for inclusion in your research report. In step one, identifying key terms and descriptors, you wanna list your descriptors out so that way you're not looking the same things up over and over again. You also wanna keep track of your process and descriptors so that way you can discuss it in the introduction of your literature review or chapter two of your research proposal. It is very important to make sure that you extract your descriptors from your research question and your research project title. The research question and project title should also summarize the entire research project. Step two, locating literature. Remember, literature should be peer reviewed. You can locate literature in public databases as well as the university's databases. I have presentations on how to access and review journal articles. If you need to, for this step, please review those presentations. There are databases out there that are not public or university databases and charge for accessing journal articles. There are plenty of journal articles out there, especially through the university's databases. I cannot stress this enough. Do not pay for journal articles. Boolean operators are words that define the relationships between words or groups of words. These commands to the database expand or limit your search by combining terms using the following, and, or, or not. Please take a moment to pause the video and review the slide on how the Boolean operators connect the words together. This slide exemplifies how someone might organize their descriptors. Please take a moment to pause the video and review it. 
Here you can see the various components of a journal article. Step three, critically evaluate and select the literature for your review. If you were to ask me how many journal articles you need for your research project, I would tell you that you need every single one that you can get your hands on. And the reason for this is so that you become an expert on your subject and so that you can identify gaps in the research. It is those gaps in the research that will shape your project. One of the best ways to critically evaluate your literature is through an annotated bibliography format. The annotated bibliography format is made up of three sections. Summarize the journal article, assess the value of the journal article, and reflect on how the journal article contributes to your project. In this course, for the annotated bibliography paper, your paper must be in APA format. You must have a title page, an introduction to orient your reader to your paper, label each article as number one, number two, and so forth, with the references listed in APA format, and then the subheadings, summary, assessment, and reflection. Please see my example on Blackboard and visit Purdue Online Writing Lab for more information. The link is in the syllabus and in Blackboard. Here is an example on how sections of your paper should look. In lieu of an annotated bibliography, some researchers tend to journal or keep a running journal of the articles that they've read. A systematic literature review is one that conforms to a specific process, such as a meta-analysis. A meta-analysis is a systematic review of literature to articulate statistically the findings across studies. As discussed previously, step four is about organizing the literature you have selected and making notes in a visual diagram. It is not something I usually do as a specific step in my research. This is sometimes referred to as coding and is usually used in qualitative analysis and in meta-analysis. When you have difficulty locating resources, something I do is back reference, which basically means looking at the references in the journal articles I have and reading those journal articles. Lastly, for step five, the annotated bibliography, along with any literature review depictions, charts, or graphs, should be referenced and used for developing your literature review or chapter two of your proposal. That concludes this presentation. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to contact me. Thank you.